You know, that song is kind of the ultimate of forgetting we are good. <coughs> David wrote that. For a friend of his. He had a friend who was at that point of uh, forgetting. Just forgetting who he was. And he did not jump. And he uh, he's now quite a successful individual who helps many individuals, who serves uh, his community well, this individual. Today's talk is, called, is based on virtue and understanding, and it comes from his book, Search for God, uh, that I, I, I'm using for the next uh, 46 weeks. Uh, it's got a lot of chapters, a lot of lessons. And this, this, this particular lesson on virtue and understanding, this book comes from the Edgar Cayce readings. And this book was put together for study groups where they're on back order, so we don't have them yet. We, I have sold so many between the study group I have in the city and the church here that uh, they must be wondering what's going on in America that all of a sudden there's a rush on this book. But it's, it's a uh, virtue and understanding. Virtue and understanding. I'm moving into the electronic age here, so I thought I'd bring my iPad with me uh, for my notes. And there we are. The beginning of the chapter, study group reminds us from Philippians 4, 8, and it says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Because it's easy to think about a lot of things, isn't it? But to choose what you're going to think about, to choose so that we don't have to reach this place. And I'm not going to ask for a show of hands on how many people have been to this place, except I will raise mine. I have been to that place more than once in my life, where I just thought I, I almost lost hope. And to reach out and somebody catch me, please. Somebody, somebody help me, because I can't think of what to do anymore, and I have forgotten God. I have forgotten I'm good. Years ago, I asked Kenneth to sing this song here in a talk called Because I'm Worth It. And I thought, of course, of the old uh, commercial, Because I'm Worth It, the hair commercial. <laughs> and, but I'm worth catching. And the person you like the most is worth catching, and the person you like the least is worth catching. And so to pay attention, and it doesn't mean feel sorry for them. It's to know the Christ in them, to know the love in them, to know the truth in them. Too often, we pity people into their misery and our own. Because we see them in pain, and we think, oh, oh. And it's, oh, love exists here. Love exists here, even though we're both having trouble seeing it. In the book... It says, in defining virtue and understanding, we should understand that we are looking at the, these terms, virtue and understanding, as expressions or activities of the soul or spirit forces and not mental or emotional concepts. See, we don't want to limit, we don't want to limit spirit or truth to the world. We want to expand our understanding of these terms and these expressions so that they are big and universal, much bigger than I have ever before thought. Imagine if you let love be much bigger than you could describe it. If you let truth be bigger than you could describe it. If you let God be bigger than you can describe it. If you let yourself be bigger than you can describe you. And, and, and so to look at that, virtue is to be pure in our purposes. When I read that, I thought, oh, geez. Oh, geez. But I have some exceptions in my thinking. But to be pure 
in our purposes, which is to serve, quite frankly. That's what to purity is to, is to serve mentally and emotionally before you serve physically. To be pure, in, let's say you, you have, a, have a job, you have a goal, you have things. Would you be willing, would you be willing that everyone, absolutely everyone, does work that they love doing? Would you be willing that everyone be happy and joyous and in love with the God of their understanding? Not your understanding, but their understanding. Even if they don't use the word God. To let, to let truth be the guide, without exception. There was a time I really desired it. Relentlessly, all day long, I sought God. I sought God. I sought God. And I don't mean as a person. I mean I sought God thinking. I sought God seeing. I sought, and my life got so much better, got so much easier, because I, the conditions didn't necessarily change. Lots of hard stuff came up, but I knew what to do with it. I knew what to think about it. And I knew how to perceive it. And I'm getting back to that again, because I had forgotten for a couple of years. And I, you know, and I kind of used up my surplus, my surplus of light. Because I was mad, I began, you know, as I'm taking it out of this, I'm masking it over here. But I, I, I've been journaling daily, and I've been seeking the answers of spirit rather than the answers of Sean. Rather than the answers of those who have opinions about me. Rather than to seek the answers of spirit, because I want to be pure in my purpose. I want to forgive because that's what I do. You know, I, when I quit smoking, I quit smoking so that I would know God better, not to prevent sickness. I quit smoking because it was in the way of my prayer life. And so to put down gossip, criticism, and complaining because it's in the way of my prayer life and it's in the way of my remembering that I'm good. To put down certain things, not because they're bad, it's just they're not reminding me that I'm good. Our mission is to continually discover, demonstrate, and educate that our source of good is God within are your lunchtime conversations reminding you continuously that your source of good is God within, is your dinner chatter, is your head chatter reminding you that your source of good is God within, is the way that you handle traffic reminding you of the way that you speak to your spouse, the way you speak about your former spouse, the way you speak to your children and your parents. Is it reminding you that your source of good is God within, or source of good is truth within, or love within? Is, it, is, is your dialogue with life reminding you that your source of good, is it pure? And uh, let me tell you something now. If you're beating yourself up because it isn't, you're just exacerbating it. Guilt does not help us with our purity because we haven't been doing it. It's fine if we haven't, but today's a new day. Today is right now. What are you going to do right now? Are you going to beat yourself up for yesterday? Are you going to experience guilt for yesterday or the day before or 10 years ago or 30 years ago? Could you today seek first the kingdom? We will not worry about tomorrow. Today, will I seek first the kingdom? Well, in many cases, I know that I will. And I can think of a couple places where it's likely to be a challenge later on today. But right now, I'm seeking the kingdom. Right now, I'm having a ball seeking the kingdom, and I'm doing it with a lot of like-minded individuals. That's one of the reasons we show up we show up right here. That's why the, this, this minister, I just adored him. It was a wonderful church out in Palm Springs. It was a religious science church. And he, he, he said a lot of funny things, which I always like funny. But when he said that, if you, uh, 
argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. He also said, if you're bored, you're boring. <laughs> and I found that interesting. And he said a lot of great stuff, which I don't remember all of it. But virtue, imagine this, virtue is full cooperation that prepares the way for enlightening and uplifting humanity. What would you be cooperating with except truth, except peace? of joy. You'd be cooperating with what God is, therefore with what you are. You would be agreeing with God quickly. You see, I don't know if all of you are fully aware of this. I know I've said it several times, but God does not perceive your problems. God does not see your trouble. God does not see your sickness. God does not see your pain. I don't care what church told you this in the past. God does not see what's wrong with your life. And quit asking God to, because if God could see your problem, God would be your problem. <clears throat> Let God be God and seek to agree with God. What is God? Love, light, wisdom, omnipresence, omnipotence, omniscience. Agree with God about what you are because you are what God is. And so keep agreeing and then agree, you know, even agree with God about what your neighbor is and the people you're liking, the people you don't like. Agree with God about them, not to, quit agreeing with your ego or your past. Quit agreeing with your offended past or your frightened past about what these people are or this situation is. You do not need to win the prize for having the worst childhood. You don't want to win the prize for having the worst past. It won't serve you. I have a past. These events took place. I prefer that they didn't mean the meaning I've given them before. I would prefer to know the meaning that is true. And so, Spirit, if my past can help me right now to know God better, then I want to know about it. Otherwise, I've got to put my past behind me because I need understanding. And virtue always leads the way to understanding. Virtue always precedes understanding. Virtue is the pureness of heart, the pureness of soul, the pureness of mind. Virtue is the seasoning of faith, the essence of hope, and the crowning element of truth, an attribute of God. Virtue leads the way to understanding. So understanding is impossible without virtue. True understanding. I can make something up and think I understand. Well, she did this because her mother did this, and you know, and this all happened there. And you're doing David and I have a, have a an agreement. I don't want to say a rule, I want to say an agreement that we will not give motive to each other. You know, I can't say, you're saying this because of this. I can say it, but he'll call me on it and vice versa. Instead, we now, why do you think you're saying this? You know, what's coming up for you that you would say this? Uh, I, can know, I know how I can feel about what was said, because that I, I can decide, but I can't decide why he said it. And so therefore, I, I am the world. I don't decide why people behave the way they do. The best I can come up with, if, if they're doing something really nasty, is they forgot they were good. They just forgot they were good. They think they're doing the right thing to feel how they want to feel, but obviously screaming and yelling at someone is not going to get you the peace you crave. It's not going to get you the prosperity you wish to experience and the abundant love uh, that, that you do. I, I, I've told this before, and I, I, it's a funny one to me. As somebody I used to mentor, he, he had a job that with people he didn't care for, and he wanted some sort of a promotion. And he... Went to work that day, and we had prayed in advance, and then he went to work that day, and he called me, and maybe he came home, and, I, and he said, I said, so how'd it go? He said, I hope they get run over by a bus. And I said, no, you don't. What you want is them to give you what you asked for. That's what you want. Being run over a bus just seems like the viable solution. <laughs> 
but it's an insane solution. But that's not what we want. I counseled a teenager one day who was so angry at his mother, and I said, Let, let's start with this. No one wants to hate their mother. None of us want to hate our parents. We might, but we don't want to. Nobody wants to hate. Nobody wants to be in angst. Nobody wants that. We've just settled for it. Because we didn't know we could have the kingdom. We didn't understand that we all the glory of God is ours. And why is that? Because we were not pure in our motives. We were not pure in our purposes. Virtue leads the way to understanding, and we've been trying to skip a step. We've been trying to get understanding without the virtue. Get the virtue. Claim the virtue. Claim the pureness in your thoughts, your motives. We, we, we will settle for a little bit of love from somebody who's not very nice when we can have all the love there is by knowing we are the love that is. I am the love that is, and therefore I can see the love that is. I don't have to settle for crumbs. That's not, there's nothing virtuous about settling for crumbs. There's not a, nothing virtuous about settling for less than the kingdom. There's nothing virtuous about that at all. There's nothing pure about it. Because in that, that's false humility. Oh, this is all what God must want for me. Well, that, that can't be true. That can't be true. The, that which created the universe cannot wish for a little for anyone. And we can ask all the argumentative questions. Well, then why are some people poor? And why are others struggling? And why? I don't know. I don't understand their journey. I don't understand mine. How am I going to understand theirs and other countries and other places and stuff? What I can do is seek to know the truth. What are my motives? You know, start at home. Put your own oxygen mask on. Put your own prayer mask on. And get in touch with God for the sake of being in touch with God. For no other reason than being in touch with God. They tell us. Unless we are pure, how can we expect others to be pure? Because I sure would like you to do it for me. So I can be a big sloth over here. <laughs> and everybody else can do the hard work. Oh, man, I wish David could just do it all and then I don't have to. I wish you guys could do it all and then I don't have to. Because they see, if you guys suddenly are the purest of beings, I'm going to look like the best minister in town. <laughs> whether I'm behaving that way or not, whether I'm thinking that way or not. But it doesn't work that way. Because you see, even if each of you claim purity as your reality, and somebody perceived, falsely perceived me as the best minister in town, although I'm pretty good. I, uh, <laughs> if I'm not pure in my modus, I'm not happy. I'm not at peace. I'm not in joy. I'm not in my conscious mind what God is. And so I'm obligated for myself to do this, to think whatever thoughts are necessary to think. I caught myself many times this week on this trip. I, I get a little anxious in traffic, and, uh, and especially if we can't find a place. And, and so it's, and so it, who gets the brunt of it? The guy in the passenger seat. Uh, <laughs> he can handle it. <laughs> he has thought exchange. He can handle it. <laughs> but I caught myself, and I, and I pulled it in much faster than ever before. I realized, oh, I don't have to be afraid. I don't, just because we just passed the diner, we've got to go four blocks out of our way. I don't have to be afraid of that. I don't have to be afraid of anything. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to worry. I don't have to want to die because it seems like the only solution to a hard life. I don't have to want to escape because it seems like the only solution. The way to virtue and understanding is through prayer and meditation. Do it. Do it. Do it. 
do it five minutes a day will make all the difference in the world. Virtue has the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. It strengthens the spiritual quality of humankind and engenders a greater knowledge of the Maker and a greater faith in the Maker. The more we open our hearts as a channel of blessings to others, the more power we possess. Do you hear that? Virtue and understanding have to do primarily with ourselves and with our re relationship to the creative forces. They are reflected in our judgment of others. For our conduct is a reflection of our inner thoughts. And that's a bear. The judgment of others is the reflection of my beliefs, the reflection of my faith, my judgments, and the conduct of others. And so to keep asking God, or spirits, or whatever <coughs> word you want to use, okay, tell me my, what's really going on here, because otherwise I'm going to make something up, and whatever I make up will limit it and keep me forgetting for a little while longer. And finally, let virtue and understanding be in me, for my defense is in thee, O Lord, for thou, near, thou hearest the prayer of the upright in heart. Thou hearest the prayer of the upright in heart. Let your desires be to know God. Let your desires be to be connected to spirit. You know, you already know all the stuff you want. You don't have to keep praying for it as if you're going to forget or God's going to forget. You know, you need a new refrigerator, ask once. But ask yourself to be willing to experience a new refrigerator. But you don't keep asking God for a new refrigerator. You know, God doesn't care, quite frankly, whether you have a new refrigerator or not. God doesn't care. God is. And because God is, I am almighty powerful to manifest the most magnificent life imaginable for me. You get it? You are powerful to manifest the most magnificent life for you. Nobody else could live your life. That's what makes your life good. Nobody else could live my life. That's what makes my life good. But be in touch with spirit. Seek ye first the kingdom. And all else will be added unto you. And Kenneth is going to sing an old standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.